if you are a company right now and a company that uh, of course is uh, almost geography independent and you are looking where to relocate or where to open an office i would recommend el salvador 100 percent is a safe country first of all and i think is is the the one of the the, the best thing that happened in the last two years right so if you are inviting your co-workers here you want to make sure that they are safe right they can go around the streets and have an ice cream at night and uh, and enjoy their lives the country is beautiful the nature is beautiful there are beaches like here in uh, in El Zonte that are incredible Paolo, we're seeing uh, quite a bit of you in El Salvador these days. It's a new home for you, or what, are, what, what we can look forward to? Yeah, I well, first of all, thank you very much for, for inviting me. And um, I, I really like El Salvador. I think the entire team, our companies, really love the place. Um, there is, a, we feel like it's a unique opportunity for Bitcoiners, but actually for people that are looking for a new home, as I, I think, tweeted a few, di few days ago. Um, it's a country that is going, um, that is changing the direction compared to all the other countries that are, or the majority of the, the countries that I visited recently. So I'm a European, I'm Italian. Um, I spent most of my life in, in uh, Europe, and I saw how Europe started to devolving, uh, unfortunately. Um, in the 80s, was I was born in 84, uh, was great, everyone was happy, things were working. Then more and more, the country or the, the European Union started to go towards uh, um, financial issues, um, money, um, you know, economical uh, downfall, uh, security issues. We are seeing like cities like uh, um, Milan, uh, Paris, Rome, London that are becoming extremely dangerous. People are upset. Um, the availability of uh, jobs is not what was before. So I think we can describe Europe as, uh, as stagnating. Then I had the luck to start traveling uh, quite a lot and uh, I visited, uh, I came to El Salvador. I remember when we, I, we talked the first time you were here and you said you actually hadn't traveled that much up to that time because when you were younger, you know, that the, the funds were short, but then you were just so busy with, with Tether blowing up the way that it has. And, and so have you had some more time to travel now? Yes. In the last two years, I traveled really, really a lot. I mean, I never stopped, uh, always on a plane. And um, El Salvador is the country where things are happening now. First of all, I think in general, the region, Central and, and South America are, is the region where you can see change change in a positive way. Again, Europe stagnating. You can see here, people are trying something different and trying to uh, become, to emerge from, from, this, from uh, you know, the past decades of um, economical and financial issues. And um, when I see El Salvador, I think is, is the culmination of this movement is a small country. And I think that uh, the revolution, the next renaissance of, uh, of uh, humanity will come from small countries. Unfortunately, big countries are too slow to change direction. They, uh, it's hard for them to put up the reforms that are important to bring them back to their original wealth, to the original economical growth. El Salvador is uh, instead in a different situation. Small country has, has re-elected um, a government and a president that has been known for the la in, in the last four years to, to make real change, to increase security, to make reforms, economic reforms, to adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender. Right? He dared to do things that no one else did. So when you look around and you want to find a new home, you don't want to be in a place that will just 
you know, go down the bin or just mm, remain exactly as it is for the next 10 to 20 years. I'm a little bit pessimistic on, on you know, with with the world and, and sorry if I spoil, <laughs> you know, spoiling the mood, but um, with the world. No, going this is towards, what we want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the world is going towards a direction where from one side you have social unrest because, you know, People are, you know, as I said, in Europe, but also I can see North America are upset, right? So, you know, in certain cities also in North America are become more more dangerous. Uh, LA, San Francisco, I have many friends there. And, um, you know, the, the, there are many social issues. Same applies to, to Europe, as I said. And um, look, it's, it's um, this won't have, end up well. You add that to economical crisis, um, countries are print, printing like crazy. Even the U.S. that has the most used currency in the world, the U.S. dollar, um, they printed two trillion dollars in 2023. Um, 2020 and 2023, by the way, was a year that where nothing happened. Yeah, right. the, the the economy. There was no recession. The economy is doing well. There's no, you know, no war that we're you know officially involved in, but still just crazy deficits. Yes, and so, and and that is the best country. Because if you look around, like you know, Europe uh, with uh, you know, even Germany, that is the most efficient and rich country in Europe, is having serious problems with um, many uh, steel factories had to close or pause their production because of problems with energy and so on. Of course, there is a war against between Russia and Ukraine, but all these things are putting a lot of pressure on people. Uh, the gap between poor and rich is increasing, increasing like um, never before. Then you have the uh, population, the number of, um, of, of newborns is going down. You have the unemployment is going up. And then you have things like um, artificial intelligence that can uh, really uh, enter in, in the market and start, uh, you know, removing jobs from, um, you know, from, uh, from people that, uh, you know, maybe are doing, uh, uh, you know, nor normal, normal jobs. And so... It feels like uh, all together it can is is like powder uh, that uh, can is is getting more and more nearby to to the fire, and um, and the political the political um, movement and um, the governments are not doing anything. They're 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 just watching. They are just uh, focusing on minor issues uh, on. You know, on uh, on on uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, and uh, I'm sure that some some listener won't like it, but you know, the wokeism and, and so on is coming is coming to Europe as well, and uh, you know, is uh, quite popular. Yeah, everything's right. falling down, and they're they're arguing about how many genders there is, and this craziness. It's... I like that everyone can do and say whatever they want, right? So it's not the problem of of uh, you know of, of genders and so on. I mean, there. are who cares? I mean, the world is free. The yeah. world is beautiful. But it shouldn't be the thing the government's exactly. focused on. <laughs> yes, the problem is so many resources spent in all on all these matters when people are upset, when people have big problems, they don't know about their future. In in Italy, if you work like forty years, you can forget about the pension. So you work, you you pay taxes, and at the end, if and you, high taxes, then, yes, right? up to sixty percent. And then if you are lucky, you know, the average salary is 1.2 thousand uh, euros. But uh, if you are lucky, you will get, uh, after 40 years of work, 400 euros per month in, uh, in, in pension. But it, it really, if you're lucky, and, uh, you know, the, the healthcare, the quality of healthcare in Europe also is going down, right? Taxes are going up. Like, you can imagine, like, what I'm saying is, um, is, um, is explosive power, powder getting more and more nearby a, a fire. Is, is true. And then if you come to El Salvador and you see actually things that are changing, feels like to be in an ark, right? So a new found ark that is being built by, by wise people, um, of course, starting from, from the government. If the government is not aligned, you cannot do anything, right? So it's uh, there, there is no way to change things. But when you have the right conditions, you have entrepreneurs, uh, people like you uh, coming here, from from everywhere in the world, right? Uh, that that want to focus on a really specific location, geographical location, Earth, bring their talent, their intelligence, their contacts, um, and uh, that's the only way to build a country from scratch. And the good thing about El Salvador is like 
uh, has its own history, of course, but it's also almost a, like a clean canvas. You can you can start actually looking around, think, finding things that needs to be fixed, and actually fix it. And the government will support you if you try to to fix things in 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 Italy. They will look at you. Are you crazy? First of all, why why you are busting my xx right so uh -huh. why why you should mind your own business don't come here don't change things we don't like changing things and and you again here you 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 are in this uh, miraculous place that where where <laughs> where they 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 will if you start to fix things or improve things or just you know raise a hand and say oh, i want to help they will tell you yes great also bring your friends because <laughs> maybe they can help you too or they can help too right so that's why i'm here that's why we as bitfinex as tether we believe that it could be a really a new home for our companies because you know we want to give to the guys that work with us the opportunity to experience what we found here. And uh, we want also to bring in the people uh, from, from abroad. Of course, we cannot move the entire companies, but we can. We want to give the opportunity for many or to many of our colleagues to just come here, spend a few days, few weeks, few months, and just contribute to the territory. Um, you know, we... we 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 have many of um, many of our collaborators that are always asking me, oh, well, how is El Salvador? It's like really the the promised land. <laughs> well, I've been watching you guys over the last few years as you get more and more involved, and there's been different needs that have come up, and you guys have have you know put money towards when there was issues with uh, the gang violence really rose up. I know you guys did a. Uh, stuff with a bunch of different families that were affected. Um, you guys supported the center that we have in Punta Mongo. And so I've, I've been watching you guys get really involved. And so I've been curious on a personal level, Tether is this huge, has become this huge entity. You guys are about a hundred billion now, right? Yes, in, in Tether. And so, and I think you guys just recently released that it was what, 2.9 billion in profit from yeah. like getting that right from, from the yeah. last quarter. So, so you're as a company, you're the 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 funds. Obviously, it's, it's a little bit different because it's stablecoin. But the funds you guys have control of is like three times the size of the Salvadoran annual economy. The profits that you guys bring in are about probably on the yearly level what the Salvadoran government brings in in tax revenue. So it's been fascinating for me to see even a big entity like you guys see that there's so much potential here that even though it's a small country. You're obviously not focused on necessarily making money here in El Salvador, but you see it as like a base for the world. At least that's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So I'd love if you could kind of color color that in a little bit. What you guys uh, have vision for that? So, you know, both Tether and Bitfinex are were born thanks to Bitcoin. So Bitfinex was born in 2012. Uh, Tether was born in 2014, and um, we have been driven by the passion that we have in Bitcoin as the ultimate currency. So we, and also we have been extremely lucky, right? If you ask, would have asked me four years ago, you know, if a Tether could become um, 100 billion dollars uh, in market cap, I would ask you, would have you smoked? Because, you know, I, it was impossible to me in my mind because, you know, it's, uh, these are big, really big, big numbers. And, um, but, but and, and have the opportunity for treasuries to be paying 5% at yes, that same time. Exactly. Like, I mean, it feels <laughs> like, so I think Tether is an amazing product. It is a, is a product that is so simple and so useful that uh, actually has been disrupting an entire industry that is uh, the, the financial and payment industry. But uh, it came along as a really simple idea. And... Um, as a way, as a complementary way to Bitcoin, right? <clears throat> 2014, uh, the uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain world was completely different. There were just few exchanges, Bitfinex, Kraken, Bitstamp, Coinbase, OKCoin, OK BTCC. And um, trading across exchanges, moving money across exchanges, arbitraging was super difficult. So uh, Giancarlo De Vazzini, our CFO, came up with this idea of creating like we're using the same brilliant technology that Bitcoin was using, but uh, for but uh, just putting a dollar on top of it. So it's really simple as that. That, and um, the only protocol available was uh, OmniLayer uh, before called Mastercoin. So we started with that, 
And slow, for the first two years, no one really cared about Tether. Actually, even if we were going to exchanges or people like in highly um, educated in, in financial matters, they didn't understand Tether, USD, USDT. And, um, you know, after in 2017, then uh, first in 2000, end of 2016, Poloniex started to support it. Um, and then 2017, uh, we saw Binance, uh, uh, basically the birth of Binance and uh, Binance adding all the trading pairs again, USDT, they didn't have a bank account. And then uh, Wobi started, then OKX was formed, um, and um, all the other exchanges started to use USDT as their digital dollar. And um, and then more recently, we have seen, especially after the pandemic, we have we started to see um, USDT as the currency for the emerging markets and the developing countries. Did that take you by surprise? I mean, having it be originally just a way for people to move money back and forth to exchanges was it surprising when you saw people actually using Tether as currency? Surprise? No, I mean, in the sense that. Of course, it was a brilliant idea and uh, it was uh, the rightful way to use it, much more interesting and powerful uh, that um, compared to arbitrage, right? Arbitrage in, in the end is quite yeah. boring. But we didn't have a marketing team until early 2022. So we were like, okay, uh, this is happening, fine, we're happy, uh, right? What we, countries did you see it happening in first? Argentina, uh, Brazil, Turkey, um, uh, Vietnam. Um, Venezuela, so all these countries started to adopt a lot uh, USDT. I mean, for, for these countries, it's just uh, the digital dollar, right? Yeah. So if they you, wanted access to dollars, and that was a much easier way to exactly. I mean, if you if you tell in in to these countries, if you go in these countries, you use the term tether, they don't un, they don't understand you. But if you use the term USDT for them, yeah, okay, it's dollars, right? It's digital dollars for them. That's enough. They know that they can pay people, they can go to the barber shop, they go buy groceries, and that's fine. And uh, that's the success of Tether. I mean, we believe in simplicity, right? When you create a product that is actually uh, useful, that is simple, that people can use it in their day-to-day -day lives, then you won, right? It's, and um, we created a product that w over its time steered in a different direction. And um, I would like to say that it's all because, you know, we were super intelligent and great in, 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 uh, in the business and strategy and so on. No, just people took it and, and morphed it in something that they really needed because the vast majority of people need a checking account. In many countries, the 70% of the population in, in Vietnam, in even Mexico has 60% of the population that is not banked. And the most common thing that these people need is not a saving account that won't yield. No, they don't care. They have a bigger problem. They don't have a checking account. And for them, you know, the most trusted currency, especially compared to their initial currency that is losing 70 80% of the value against the dollar is the US dollar. Yeah. And so that's why Tether became so popular. So go, going back to your question, um, we are not here to make money. We, we want to make sure that we can contribute to the best opportunity of, of humanity in doing something cool, something that will, will not unfold as many other uh, countries in the world. And um, I understand that I'm being pessimistic, but uh, you know, the, something that uh, I would say also um, related to the success of Tether, that unfortunately I'm saying this with, heart, with my heart in my hands, is the, the, the bigger the success of Tether, so Tether has more success in countries that have more problems. Yeah. And is unfair, right? So is 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 um you know is is um not is not what you like to see, right? And so that's why we, we like to invest part of our uh, revenues in actually trying to make things better and uh, do education and um you know, bring uh, talent and uh, and uh, help local uh, local people, help local businesses. We in El Salvador, but also in other countries, you know, we we give grants to local businesses that uh, we you know that we meet around. Of course, we cannot do everything. We we are not the government, but we try we try to help because we believe that creating a, a safe and sound economy is the beginning of of a country to resurrect for from its ashes. 
Do you, do you feel it's kind of ironic that I know you guys are, are really Bitcoiners at heart and think that that fiat currency longer term is is trash, but but your business model is tied to the dollar so strongly now it's it's the, you're in this kind of place of tension. I, I'm sure I'm sure that's not lost on you. I think I would describe it as poetic in a way. Okay. It's um, I think. You know the fact that uh, we can help. You know we Tether invented three things. Let's start from that. He invented stable coins, so you know fiat currencies on blockchain. He invented another important thing that, and, and all these three things that I'm going to say are, are extremely upsetting for the, the establishment and uh, of uh, traditional finance. So um, stable coins as a way to disrupt payments and checking accounts. Fully reserve banking, uh, banking. So you know we have now 104 percent of reserves, so highly liquid. If you look at uh, Silicon Valley Bank, uh, Silvergate Signature, I mean, all these banks had invested in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years municipality bonds. I mean, uh, it's like uh, you invest uh, 50, 100 million dollars in in the small bonds issuances from places like I don't know. Alzont and Punta Mango. I mean, yeah. fine, it's a great places, but you, you know, they are not where you should put all the money of your creditors, and um, well, that happened in in many banks in the U.S. Well, it's so ironic too because there's always been tether fud from the beginning, and and that's always been the oh tether's going to go down, and you guys have come through as the the last man standing as the banks have gone down, as exchanges have gone down, all these things, and you guys just keep uh, looking stronger and stronger. Well, if I uh, let me do a, a segue here. So four years ago, right? Imagine a room full of people in uh, in the industry of Bitcoin, crypto industry, right? And uh, in that room imagine all the most influential people um, and um, you if you were looking around all these people were you know whispering ah, look at tether they, they are they are going down they are like <laughs> you know they are the black sheep and so on and then and then fast forward to four years in the room there is only us so <laughs> look at what happened in 2022 and 2023 i mean ftx and uh, and uh uh, Voyager, like Genesis, and the, all these companies yeah. disappeared. Like, and they did all the things that they accused accuse Tether of. <laughs> like, they were they were lending based on pinky swears. Like, you go there and ah, I created this token. I have sixty billion worth of it because you know I never sold. I only sold one yeah. at sixty billion dollar valuation, <laughs> and. Uh, but give me like uh, 50,000 Bitcoin so that I can trade. Like, how is possible? And uh, anyway, yes. So we, we uh, in a way, is kind of uh, interesting and, and, and fun what happened. I mean, it's like what I always say that we have been seen by uh, many in the industry as the villains. But uh, sometimes someone's villain is someone else's hero and um, you know maybe for for a small community we could be heroes we could be helpful yeah and the third thing that we invented um is the fact that uh, for every person that purchase usdt or holds usdt we buy a piece of the us debt so these are the three things that we invented and uh, so, you guys are what, like the number eighteenth largest holder, twentieth, okay. just just below Germany. I think okay. Germany is one on one hundred four. <laughs> and look, China is going down. China is selling two, three, three, four years ago. They had two trillion dollars worth of U.S. debt, and now they are they have seven hundred billion. So we are the ones that keep keep buying and we have we are the biggest distributors of uh, of uh, of us debt and uh, for the us dollar and yes you're right we are bitcoiners i also believe that uh, um not everyone in this world is ready for for bitcoin i mean uh, when i talk to my parents of course you know they now they know better so <laughs> <laughs> they understand bitcoin really well especially my father is is uh, is a true believer but uh, when I, when I talk around, when I meet people um, that do, didn't have the time to my time to spend on on Bitcoin, 
they still have problems, right? They, they have a problem to solve. And their problem is they don't trust their banks. Uh, look at Argentina. If you even if you can buy dollars, US dollars, and you leave them, if you leave them in the bank account, the, the bank can seize them and use them, you know, the central and bank. has several times over history. Yes. Yeah. So people that. are fed up. So they they um, they just want to hold their own money. But they don't have the time yet to understand Bitcoin. So the the shortest path to Bitcoin is actually to give them a, a digital wallet. And then on that digital wallet is more likely they have USDT. And then is a really easy step to Bitcoin. So I'm the first person telling them, look, USDT is not Bitcoin. There is a central company. We can freeze wallets. We have to comply with the regulations because we are using banking, right? So yeah. there is is a, is a cheaper to, to transact than um, than the US dollar. It's faster. There are many advantages of USDT, in my opinion, compared to the US dollar. But especially with, when it comes to cash, it's still not decentralized. It's, it's not still decentralized. A central point of failure. If they, now, I would I would describe it as like people would need the best approach to me for, for a person is having Bitcoin as a saving account and USDT as a checking account. The reality is that, and that would be perfect. In 20 years, I hope that people would have Bitcoin as a checking account and Bitcoin as a savings account. Yeah. It's 20 years for 30 years from now. I, I don't believe in, in, in rapid changes. Unfortunately, it will take time, right? It's going to take time for people to start denominating in Bitcoin. I mean, exactly. that's something we we push. We're believers yeah. in that. But people are creatures yeah. of habit and they still want to price yes. it in dollars. So, Absolutely. But and my point is that in this moment, since we are still in the air of um, USDT as a checking account and uh, Bitcoin as a saving account, the vast majority of people don't have the luck of having a saving account. Right? They didn't they didn't have a bank account and uh, they had they didn't have money on the in the drawer. They had only some money that they could spend to pay for the bills and, and, and buy food, right? That's it. So the more we can help people to start creating savings account, the more they will start using Bitcoin as their saving account. And then eventually people will start pricing things in Bitcoin. But it's, it's a long way to the top, you know. So for, I, I know if if you're sent a list of wallets that, that you kind of force the sanction you you guys can seize those funds but in general people that use tether they don't have to kyc to just to be able to use it it's more just that those funds are seizable at any time is that yeah uh, there is a difference on the primary markets and secondary markets so the primary market is tether.io our platform you go there you you are an issuer you want to you, know, you, you want to purchase directly yeah. usdt from us or redeem usdt from from us you know, there is a KYC process. On the secondary market that are blockchains, exchanges, and so on. So uh, on exchanges, of course, you might have to KYC. Um, if you use it on a non-custodial way, through wallets, through, you know, yeah, through non-custodial wallets, yeah. you don't have to KYC. Yeah, makes sense. So going beyond that and getting back to what your guys' vision for El Salvador here, I, I keep hearing these rumors of... Um, you guys looking to kind of revolutionize the way that companies and countries can raise funds. The the way that we have now is is very bureaucratic and it's expensive for companies that want to raise funds and you know say they go to the Nasdaq to raise funds. Just the the paperwork and everything involved. And I'm guessing, maybe I'm wrong, that you guys kind of see El Salvador as being the new hub for this new economy. I don't know if you're allowed to talk about that or not or what yeah. your guys' plans are, but I'm, I'm super interested because I see a huge opening in the market for that. Well, just because we like to make friends, we want to disrupt something else, not just the payment industry. We believe that there is a complete unfairness in, uh, in the capital raise markets. Um, if you live in the US, uh, it is, if you have a company, you can access to, you have access to liquidity, you have access to capital. So if you have to raise $100,000, $500,000, $1 $10 it's fairly, it's not easy, but uh, you can do it, right? It's the biggest market for that. Yeah. Even a lot of companies around the world, they'll set up a Delaware company yeah. specifically because that's what they need to raise funds there. Exactly. The rest of the world is different. 
if you try, if you are in, uh, even in Europe is really difficult to access to liquidity, but even in, especially in the emerging markets, forget about it. So we believe that there is a way now that uh, Bitcoin, well, today, I think, um, uh, broke in the $1 trillion mark. There is, um, there is a solution to that. So we, as Bitfinex, we created a platform called Bitfinex Securities. We applied uh, for the digital asset license here in El Salvador. We got it. And so now we can help local and global companies uh, to submit their prospectus, their idea, their company details, and raise capital from people that are registered with Bitfinex. And I think is a... Uh, is a much more democratic and efficient way to raise capital. First of all, because you reduce the intermediaries. If uh, if you are a small, medium company, raising capital is really difficult. It is unlikely that uh, you you can raise a bond. You have to go a bank and to a bank and get a loan. But with this condition in these markets, you know, getting a loan from a bank is really really difficult. So. Um, and issuing a bond is, is difficult because you're a small company. So what we want to do is to create a platform for small and medium-sized companies, of, of course also big companies, but our point is that there is no market, that there has never been a market for small and medium companies. So we want to create something that allows, still under regulatory regime, right, because we apply to a license, you have, we are working with a local regulator, we want to create a package so that the companies uh, can can take this package, this template, can can uh, look at if it's fitting for, for their needs, they, we can help them to tokenize their stocks or raise a bond, you know, with, um, they have, of course, to disclose the interest, they, it is a security, right, so yeah. they have to provide quarterly updates, is in the is like the normal capital markets, but it's more efficient. It um, taps into the Bitcoin liquidity in the sense that Bitfinex has many whales and uh, big whales historically, and uh, is um, we we hope and we believe and we have seen and we are received the interest from many Bitcoin holders, the interest in investing in new products. So Bitcoin are sort of like this, right? So either they invest in Bitcoin or they invest in nothing. And but they really believe, of course, Bitcoiners also believe in in uh, in 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 uh, in real th- yeah. in, uh, in in the real world. They're capitalists. Right? In, yes, and so they don't want the only offering that you have on usually on exchanges like uh, Shiba Inu, all the dog coin and meme coins and so on. So they never do anything apart Bitcoin. So they want something new. They want something that is meaningful. Right, that is the the the, the capital markets. The uh, imagine um, uh, a coffee uh, farm here. They need to renew their machinery. They can raise a five hundred thousand bond, right? Five hundred thousand dollars bond. They can do it on Bitfinex securities, or you know, you have a real estate company. You want to create a new building, um, or or a new school, or like whatever. Yeah. You can raise that capital through people that believe that uh, are interested in your country, that want they have they have an attachment to your country. Of course, they want also to make money through a yield. They receive all the information from you. They can review the information. They can review your stability. It's not free money, right? So it's again, they you have to prove that you are worthy of 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 uh, you know. But it just levels the playing yes. field with U.S. companies. They have Absolutely. the same access now. Yeah. So I think is um, I cannot believe that other companies are not doing it. Well, that's that's what I'm thinking. I mean, I, I imagine this is going to be a multi-trillion-dollar market longer term. Obviously, yeah. I know these things take time, but uh, I if I were running one of the exchanges in the the U.S., I would I'd be concerned about what you guys are doing. Yeah, look, I mean, most of the people that are looking at similar licenses, they want to tokenize Apple shares. How boring is that? I mean, sure, there is a market. Yeah. Potentially, there is a huge market for that. But uh, I think it's not impactful. We are here in El Salvador because we believe that El Salvador can become the central economy and central financial area for Central and South America. And uh, this is a chance in a lifetime, both for, I think, for us and for the country. I, when I tell people that, they laugh at me, and I'm like, "No, you wait. In ten years from now, you're going to see that El Salvador is going to be a powerhouse in the finance world uh, because of 
people like you guys that are coming in and, and taking advantage of the new technology, but also the way that the government is willing to support these things and push things forward and not be happy with the status quo. So I would, what they say, right? First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then uh, they jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> exactly. So how long do you think it'll be before you guys have issues that people can actually be purchasing and that will be trading freely? So we announced recently um, uh, Bitcoin X Securities El Salvador. So I think in the next few months we we are running down the you know the, um, the all the the requests. So we receive an enormous amount of requests. Of course, we we are from doing, companies that want to issue bonds yes. or securities. Okay, exactly. So we are doing our due diligence. We want to provide good products uh, that are interesting that we know that could be interesting for for our user base, and they can leave the sign. So I I think that. Uh, the where again going on the pessimistic uh, pessimistic side, I think that one of, this is one of the moments in history where agriculture agriculture is really really important, right? So we are seeing a lot of investments in globally in agriculture and uh, food production. So we believe that uh, El Salvador could, and there are many companies that um, uh, I'm seeing in this region that are uh, interested to expand their reach, right? To create products that are also uh, exportable in other countries. So expand the economy. So on one side, you are actually creating um, an, an important or defending an important industry in a country that uh, like agriculture. At the same time, you are incre increasing your GDP because now suddenly you can in you produce much more. You can start exporting and competing on international level. So um, this is going to happen. It will take years for sure. I mean, we are not here for for a short play. I mean, it's. Uh, it's likely I would be surprised if we'll take less than 10 years, but who cares when you build, I mean, when you build cool yeah. things and when, when you really believe in your mission, you know, time is just, you have just fun. So the, the Bitcoin bond, you, you guys have uh, any announcements on that? Uh, right. That is a tricky one because the, <laughs> uh, it went back and forth before it was Bitcoin, uh, the Volcano bond. Uh -huh. Um, and then uh, Volcano Energy was created here in El Salvador because yeah. the more bond market at this scale is quite difficult, right? Because it's uh, it's a lot of money. It's, you know, uh, tranches of $250 million up to $1 billion. And um, the, the, with the interest rates on US T-bills paying 5 6%, for a bond that is, uh, you know, uh, investing in Bitcoin mining, the, the yield must be higher. And so we realized that actually talking to potential investors, what they were more interested in too was actually stocks. So if you buy a bond after the bond expires and you, you know, sure, you get a nice yield, but it ends. Yeah. Instead, they were more interested in ownership of, of, um, uh, a renewable energy plant and uh, a, you know Bitcoin mining um, plant. So that is what we are focusing on this moment, and I think is uh, is like owning a piece of El Salvador instead of just uh, giving money to El Salvador that uh, you know eventually will get back with some interest. I think you know be, be part of the story of El Salvador is much more appealing to the majority of the people I talk to. So I know the the keeps coming up that El Salvador is going to have to renegotiate with the IMF for, for a loan and they're pushing them to uh, back down on Bitcoin from everything I've seen uh, there's no chance of that happening but does that concern you guys as as a company that there's these powers that be that are pushing on them or do you feel like El Salvador has the upper hand and it's not really going to be an issue well it's um that is exactly why I love El Salvador is because it's in a situation to dem demonstrate huge strength and pushing back with uh, giants. Yeah. Right. So that is why it's so exciting because is um, is a poor country and yet is knows exactly where it is headed up, headed to, and uh, is not going to. In my opinion, is not letting is not gonna let uh, they don't let themselves be yeah. pushed around yeah absolutely yeah so uh i believe we we are you know we, we are going to see that el salvador 
um, attract investors and uh, making it its own fortune. I don't see Bitcoin being removed from being legal tender, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't either. In fact, I think I think the IMF wants to still be involved because they want to they know it's going to be a success and they want to claim victory in some way longer term. So I, it'll that, be interesting to see how it plays out. That and plus they are kind of, I would imagine that they are kind of scared if other countries yeah. would follow the same example, right? So, you know, you don't want others to, to rebel to their, to their lords. No, definitely. I'm, uh, I, but I love that that's keeping them up at night. <laughs> So what would you say uh, to other companies? I know there's a lot of companies in the Bitcoin space, but also people that are just Bitcoiners that have businesses that aren't necessarily Bitcoin related that are looking to move to El Salvador. What has been your guys' experience as how you've been treated as a, a company and how easy it is to do things here? And would you advise other companies to, to pick up and, and follow you guys here? If you are a company right now and a company that... Uh, course is uh, almost geography independent and you are looking where to relocate or where to open an office I would recommend El Salvador 100 percent is a safe country first of all and I think is is the the one of the, the the best thing that happened in the last two years right so if you are inviting your co-workers here you want to make sure that they are safe right they can go around the streets and have an ice cream at night and uh, and enjoy their lives the country is beautiful the nature is beautiful. There are beaches like here in uh, in El Zonte that are incredible. The weather's great. Yes, and no, all win here. no winters. Yes, I mean in in Europe you have winters. Yeah. In uh, in uh, you know in other like in Argentina you have winters. In the U.S. And, yes. also, yeah. Exactly. There was a snowstorm now in Europe, right? In in El Salvador you have great weather. You have good food. You have great natures. Uh, nature, you have the ocean, you have the administration, the government that is extremely helpful. They invite you and they, they ask you all the time what you need, what they can do for you to help you uh, in your process, right? If uh, they, in, in order to expedite, uh, you know, the opening of the, the accounts, the, the companies and, and so on. So uh, it's, it's completely a different feeling than everywhere else in the world. Everywhere else is, is governed by bureaucrats. They hate you. They don't want you to knock at their door. They want to say no. Yes, and they they are they want to exercise their power, yeah. right? To say no. Here they want to say yes. They want to you to suggest things and and uh, and help them um, throughout their their great journey. Have there been any challenges? The the you know it's still a developing country. Is the the there's followers talent when you guys have looked to, to hire for positions like what type of challenges have you guys faced as you've looked to expand your operations here so um we we are looking for different types of uh, of talent um one of the ones that uh, is uh, finally growing here is the um, software developers so uh, we have been contributing to torgot's dev and uh, also me, Primero Bitcoin on the education side. Uh, we uh, invested and co-founded uh, in uh, the Plan B um, network, mm -hmm. so that because we want developers to grow here, right? So it's okay to import talent, but at some point you need, in order to grow companies from 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 the territory, you need to grow the, the talent from here. And um, so with um, with um, uh, our investments and with uh, our grants in education, also we had um, some graduates in uh, from me Premier of Bitcoin to come to be uh, they were hired as uh, as um, as juniors in uh, in Bitfinex and Tether. In well, I think I saw ventures. some of them at the Plan B conference in, yes. in Switzerland this year, which was awesome to see. And th these guys, these are great guys. Yeah. They they are so thoughtful. They are they have uh, they are good coders and and they're growing so they can then teach they can inform companies they can start uh, uh, providing services and um, so that's what we want i think it will take two three four five years to create the seniority that you need yeah. in the country right so eh, nothing happens for free but uh, that is the horizon that we are looking at is is five years to have uh, the great talent in-house talent and then from there is going to be uh, immense. 
Yeah, that's what I tell people. It's like you, 10 years from now, you want to imagine like these right now are the ones leading the way, but they'll be able to mentor people that are coming up behind them. So I love that you guys are supporting all those educational efforts, which are all amazing, And but they need they need that support so we can have that first you know crew come through. Thank you. And, and, and if I can say one thing is that not only... So I see the, the, the change in the country, but in a matter of months. So I was... Uh, here in November for adopting Bitcoin, and uh, in in a matter of four months, things change rapidly. Yeah. <laughs> now I see more shops. I, see, I go around the city in San Salvador. I see I see more restaurants, uh, more more new buildings. I see like uh, grooves, how you call them in English, uh, everywhere. Yeah. Like uh, they are building like crazy. So it means that uh, the investments are coming. No, just here in El Zante, there's I think like five different condo developments <laughs> happening right now. It's it's you know five years ago you would have told somebody that they would have said you're crazy. So it's 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 exciting. It's an exciting place to be. It feels like this is the center of the world right now. Yeah, it is a international stage for the country, and uh, the the most impressive achievement is. Kicking, kicking out and keeping out the scammers. Mm -hmm. That is a really, really hard job. I mean, I can I can see how you know you the, the country would be inundated. Well, and Stacy and Max deserve high praise for that because they are relentless and and making sure that those people uh, either don't make it in or if they do, they they show them out the door. It's like, yeah, Stacey and Max is like they have hundreds of eyes. Yes. And uh, <laughs> they are dedicating their lives to, to this mission. And uh, unfortunately, we have seen so many times how, you know, from a good thing, you have a great project and now you, know, you get start, uh, you know, going, uh, you know, downhill really fast. And uh, it's now two years, two or three years, and, uh, and things uh, are still Perfect. I mean, our charts are, are, are improving uh, every month. So, yeah, that is uh, this type of, uh, of high quality, poverty development, people happy, people want to, that want to contribute. You have the right environment to make great things happen. Yeah. One kind of more personal question for you. I'm curious as to you moving out of your role as CTO to being the CEO. I know you're a coder at heart and you, you love throwing yourself into things. Has that been a challenge moving to more heading and, and leading the, the company? And I'm sure that gives you less time to, to code and develop. Well, it's a tough one because the first time as a, I, I, I was used to code 100% of my time uh, many years ago, well, still few, until a few years ago. And um, at the beginning when you start uh, coding less, right? First, you code 90% of your time, then 80% of your time. Now I code like 5% of my time. But I still code because it helps me to maintain myself fresh and also stay up to date with, uh, with technology. But in a way, I feel like coding for me is a way of, way of life, right? I think now I, I imagine technology. I think about technology and I don't need to code it. I, I know what is possible. It's like physics yeah. in a way, right? So you might be a little bit more rusty over years in, in coding, but you 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 have the, that internal experience where you, you know exactly, you, you can see things, you know, you can see the matrix yeah. in a way, yep. right? Yep. So, so, and you have, you know, fresher talent and pe more people. In the end, it's one of the issues that developers have. Uh, I manage big teams uh, of developers is sometimes developers tend to think that they can do everything themselves. Anyway, you will never be able to do everything yourself. So the moment you start to realize that as a developer and you start, uh, you know, delegating and working with others and understanding that others have uh, great skills and they can be helpful and can, are uh, as good as you, um, then you start to realize that you can maybe start focusing on a bigger picture, like on how, you know, the actual architecture and machine can work. And then you grow up and you understand, you know, how many projects, many completely different projects can be interconnected with the, some of the technologies you are working on. And so it's like you, you, you are still 
really involved in, in, in the pure architecture and, uh, you know, every single fiber of the project, but you are not anymore the person that actually make it happen. So you can actually do more because yes. you can be thinking and planning it, but have somebody else do the, yes. uh, do the actual coding. Yeah, I like that. Well, I know we have a dinner to, to get to, so uh, where can people follow you? I know you're on Twitter. Yes, I'm Paolo Arduino on Twitter, so name and surname all, all together. I make memes and uh, sometimes also, also I hope uh, say intelligent things. And I know you're passionate about the, the other projects that you're working on, uh, Hole Punch and Keith. Yes. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything uh, about those real quick. Well, I would. I know. I know it's a long uh, yeah, topic, but it would be a long grant. But um, I recommend everyone to go and visit kit.io. K e e t dot i o. Is the first is available on mobile, so iPhone and Android, and also on desktop. Is the first peer to peer chat uh, ever created. I'm saying that in a really bold way because I, all the attempts on creating super private and stoppable chat all failed. Either they are centralized, so they have central servers, or they 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 are you know not really privacy oriented. So Kit basically created started from the idea of BitTorrent, so creating this completely centralized mm-hmm. network, unstoppable network file sharing. But file sharing is uh, is just for files, right? The, the it was limited to files. The, the realization that we had five years ago, it's five years that we're working on this project, and I'm in silent mode for the first four years, uh, is that uh, we could apply the same, we could improve, because we improved dramatically the technology behind BitTorrent, the open source technology behind BitTorrent. We improved it for the last four years to apply to real, real uh, time data streams. So video, chat, um, you know, uh, movies, songs, whatever, like everything in our life nowadays is uh, social media is, is all real time data streams. So we, we work on that and we launched the first project called Kit. And um, the beauty of it is that there is no way to stop it. Stop it. If they would kill us, it will keep going. Keep going. There is no like central Bitcoin. server. Yes, there is, is Bitcoin for communications. There is no central server. The the code is there. We today we had a big release for Valentine's Day. It's called Pair and Time. So I created this concept of uh, pair to pair because mm-hmm. I'm Italian. When I we people we say peer to peer, Italians use pair peer. You know they confuse things. So now we have the pair to pair. I like that like, shirt you always have. Yes, the, pa- <laughs> the two pairs on it. The pair to pair. And and so. We created the first technology that can, as Bitcoin creates sovereign countries on the financial side, you need also sovereign communications. Now, if you are El Salvador and WhatsApp and Telegram decide to cut you off, you are basically you, the entire country stops. We kit, you know, even if they cut all the lines, the internet lines around El Salvador, people with kit can keep talking because it's peer to peer. You don't need central service. You don't need to to all your messages going to Miami and back, right? And 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 so on and so forth. So it, it's a great technology. I'm super excited. I think it's gonna be massive. I think we'll kill many web to centralized companies in next years. Is um, you know, I'm a um, big I. I'm um, extremely bearish on the cloud technology. I think that cloud is a lie. You know, it's smiley. You yeah. know, they they taught us for many years that cloud was necessary. And uh, that's well, a way for them to control all the information exactly. and, and own it. They, they told us, look, there is no way that people can talk to each other without passing through our servers, right? Yeah. Every single app is like that. But the reason, as you said, is that without having every single communication to pass through their servers, they couldn't make money. But the technology is like physics, right? Internet was built to be a peer-to-peer. You have your IP address, I have my IP address, we were supposed to have a direct connection within each other. No, they completely changed that, they make it impossible, well, not impossible, they make it uh, unbelievable. Because even when I talk today to developers, they, they don't believe it's possible. And so when I explain them how we do it, then finally they open their eyes. But it's uh, we we had this relentless, you know, education from from uh, Web two companies and, and 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 big big tech companies that the world had to be centralized and data centers had to be existing because you know they were protecting our data. No, they are not protecting our data. They are stealing our data and they are making money with yeah. our data. 
So you guys are taking on uh, the world's banks, the the fiat system, and now uh, Amazon and the cloud services. You guys are trying to piss everybody off. I yes, love it. But we live in the most uh, in the safest country in the world. Yep. I love it. I love it. Well, that's a good uh, note to to end on. Uh, people, make sure that you're following these projects, and uh, we're definitely going to have you back on as as things progress here. I'm I'm very excited to see the exchange. You know the the equity exchanges open here and see countries companies start raising funds and just see what an impact that's going to have on the world. So I appreciate you sharing that tonight. Thank you very much for having me.